Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we're going to take a look at editing better portraits inside of Lightroom. Here's my top tips for editing portraiture. Let's hit that intro and get into it. All right, let's get into it. So first things first, if you want to download and edit along with me, these photos are all from signatureedits.com slash free raw photos. You can grab those files, edit along with me. And if you want to pay it forward, you can upload a few of your own images. Thanks to the awesome photographers who made these images possible so that we could edit them today. All right, let's head over to Lightroom and we're going to get started together. So my first point I want to make, very first top tip for editing portraits that I've learned in the years I've been doing it, is you always want to start with the best possible light framing everything. Get it right in camera. That is point number one. I mention it almost every single video. The better the file is in the camera, the easier a time you're going to have editing, the more options you're going to have, and just the better the final product. So I want to compare two photos just to demonstrate this point. Our first two photos here, right, we're going to make sure they're both reset. Okay, they look pretty similar in terms of lighting overall. It's reasonably soft. But what I want you to see is when we actually begin taking the contrast up on this file, then we take the contrast up on this one. Let's just take it to kind of a normal place, somewhere around there. And let's just zoom in on the skin. Now the skin is everything. Obviously you can see this photo, not quite in focus. We'll ignore that for now. And then we'll zoom in here. Okay, see how soft and radiant and glowing this skin is compared to this one? It's just kind of Mm, patchy and sort of sickly a little bit, that comes down to the light. Now, obviously, there's two different skin tones happening here, two different models, but really, you've got a nice, beautiful glow in this photo. This one, no matter what you do, the skin just isn't going to look super healthy, and that's because of the lighting in this particular photo. It's not a result of the editing. It's just the lighting. Get it right in camera. That is tip number one. All right, let's go through and edit these photos one at a time, and we'll just kind of see what we got. So, Let's zoom back out here. First thing I always start with is white balance. If your white balance is off, everything's going to look wrong. If it's right, everything's going to feel better. So I'm going to warm it up. Maybe add a little magenta just to counter. She kind of had a green tint to her skin somewhere around there. So here's before, here's after. So we're just making little small incremental improvements as we go. And that is tip number two is get the white balance right, I suppose. And tip number three is do it in incremental stages. You're not trying to make your photo perfect in like three sliders, right? It's not about making extreme changes. It's about small incremental improvements. They all add up. And that's what makes the difference to a really highly polished, beautiful photo is doing little improvements a hundred times over and your photo winds up just being incredible. So before, after we've come a long way, now we're going to grab our highlights, take them down a little bit because I do not love how kind of patchy and harsh her skin tone is looking. So we're going to take that down a little, take the shadows up maybe just a tad, make it back off on the contrast. Now, I'm going to zoom in here. I suppose tip number four is make sure you have sharpening applied <laughs> and that your photo is sharp. Um, but what we want to do here, I love, if you're using a more updated version of Lightroom, you've got a brush called Texture. I love this brush specifically for photos that are a little bit soft, just not super sharp, I find that the texture brush does a way better job of sharpening. Now on the lips, that does not look good, so we're going to undo that. But see the difference between before and after? We're just sharpening the eyes without making it look too over sharpened. Hopefully we can get away with this. Good. And I'm going to raise the highlights just a little bit, just so that the eyes pop ever so slightly. Not too much, because that would be weird. Just a hair. Now I suppose my next tip when it comes to editing portraits is less is definitely more. So you can see that I added just a tiny bit of brightness, but her eyes actually look too bright to me. So we're going to dial back the texture, dial back the highlights. My rule of thumb is do what you think looks good and then back off by 10, 15%. And you'll always thank yourself later on down the road. Now, her eyes kind of feel like they're piercing into my soul here. They're just too sharp compared to everything else. So I'm going to back that off even a little bit more. It's kind of helpful to zoom in, zoom out, compare your changes and just see how things feel uh, zoomed in and how they feel once you're zoomed out as well. Okay, we're going to sharpen the rest of this photo and go down to detail. Now, of course, you could spend all day long making different tweaks and changes. Another tip for you when you're doing sharpening, make sure you apply a mask. Now, this masking filter, I'm holding down Alt and dragging this up and everything that is white is being sharpened. So when the mask is off, noth nothing in this photo is being left out. Everything is being sharpened. As I drag that up, Lightroom is going to look for the lines of contrast 
and it's going to get more and more picky about what it sharpens and what it doesn't. So I always make sure to add masking to my portraits because there's no reason to sharpen everything in this photo. Some things actually will look worse if they're sharpened. You'll just bring out the noise, make the photo worse. So we're going to apply masking to every photo. And that Alt Option key on your keyboard does an amazing amount of things, especially especially in the sharpening panel. It does the same thing with our radius. It helps us see a little bit more of what's going on and our detail brush. And if you wonder about sharpening, you want to really know what all of these do in depth, I have a separate video of that on my channel, so you can check that one out. Okay, so we're feeling a little bit better here. Here's before, here's after. Small incremental improvements. Now, next thing I love to do on portraits is separate the subject from the background. So we're just going to draw our eyes naturally to the subject by making them a little bit brighter than everything else. So we're going to reset this radial filter. I'm going to take my contrast down. And this is another of my top things that I do in almost every video is I will grab a radial filter, take the contrast down, and you'll see that it makes everything a little bit brighter in the center of that filter. Press O so you can see where it's happening. And it's also going to bring the contrast down, which is going to smooth out her skin at the same time. So it's a win-win. We've made her brighter against the background. We've also smoothed out those skin tones. Life is feeling good. We're going to add a little bit of white back in here just to brighten things ever so slightly. You can see here's before. And here's after. So her skin is just a little bit more of a glow, a little bit softer. And on that same token, we can go in here, we can grab our clarity and take that down. Not too much because that's just ridiculous, but a little bit is going to help smooth out those skin tones just like that. Now, if you want to, you can duplicate this radial filter. Press the apostrophe key and that will invert it. So now it's affecting outside of that box instead of inside. And then we're going to reset it and just bring our exposure down, making her stand out from the background a little bit more. Here's before, here's after. Right. Now, lastly, I'm going to take a look here with an adjustment brush and just add some selective mm, pop to the image. So we're going to grab my Add Texture brush. These come with all of the signature edits presets, but if you don't have those, you can go ahead and just copy these settings, something like it. There's no magic perfect secret formula here. Just grab roughly something like this. And anywhere that I really want to enhance the texture, I'm just going to, you got it, brush in. Okie doke. Okay. So basically her jacket, her hair, something like that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Obviously, there's a million other things we could do with this photo, but we've got lots to do today. So I'm not even going to worry about adding a tone curve or anything like that. That's another tip I have for you is just because uh, you have the tools inside of Lightroom, just because Lightroom has a whole bunch of other stuff doesn't mean you necessarily have to use it in every single photo. I think that this portrait actually looks pretty good as it is, so I'm going to leave it. That's fine. I don't have to add a million other things if it's good as it is. And that's another thing you'll find, the better your photo is in camera, the less is necessary to make it look good in Lightroom. So if you're actually taking a ton of time trying to make your photos look good in Lightroom, it might be that you just need to improve how you capture them in the future so that you don't have quite so much editing work to do. Okay, this photo is beautiful. It depends what kind of a look you're going for. Obviously, we're going to start by getting our white balance dialed in there. Looks a little bit green, so we'll add a little magenta. And maybe we're a little warm but we're right around the sweet spot, so I'm not going to tweak that too much. Before, after. So I just took some of the green out, added some magenta, cooled it down a little bit, and added a little bit of contrast. And really, for me, I kind of like this. I might already stop there, but we're going to go through a little more. I'm thinking I took it slightly too far with the white balance. So I'll dial it back. And if we wanted to, we could take our highlights down a little. Mm, probably not necessary. Again, I'm going to follow my own advice. If you don't need to do it, just leave it alone. We're going to go in here, focus on the eyes, the lips, the eyebrows, just enhance those a little bit. So we're going to start with the add texture brush, same thing. Just make that eyebrow a little more pronounced. The eyelashes, we can do the same thing. And it's all a matter of taste. You might see this and be like, that's way too far. Okay, dial it back. That's cool. I'm all right with that. Okay, and same thing with her hair. Is it necessary? No. Is it something to kind of add a little bit more pop and interest? Maybe. I think I've taken it a little too far here, so we're going to just hit this little triangle here on the right. This is another tip. Not much to do with portraits, but just in general. If you hit that triangle, it will collapse this whole box. And then you have this awesome slider that lets you adjust the intensity of the entire brush settings, which is crazy handy. 
Okay, there's that. That's looking okay. Her eyes might be a little too smoky, but we'll we'll feel feel that out later. I'm going to do the same thing as before. We've already got some nice subject separation here where the background is nice and dark. The thing that is standing out to me, though, is that her body is actually quite a bit brighter than her face. So overall, your eye is going to be drawn to the brightest part of the image. So what I'm going to do is our contrast trick again here. Press O so I can make sure that my effect is happening inside the circle instead of outside. And the apostrophe key is going to invert it. Press O again so I don't have to see that overlay. And then we're going to take our contrast down. You can see how it made it just a little bit brighter, a little bit softer. We're going to brighten things ever so slightly. Good. I'm going to make another one of these. Duplicate it. So you just right click. Select Duplicate. I'm going to rotate this lovely radial filter. Reset it entirely. And we're going to do kind of the opposite here. We're going to darken things down a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of contrast. Not too much. Okay, somewhere like that. All right, here's before and here's after. So you can see we've just smoothed things out, little incremental changes, and over time they start to add up. So we could go through, we could continue doing some different things, but for this particular photo, I'm feeling all right. I think it's okay. It doesn't need a lot of tweaking, and I kind of like portraits to be a little bit more natural. And I suppose that would be my next tip, is err on the side of more natural versus less natural. Overall, you're going to be way happier with your images in terms of just being able to use them in your portfolio if you actually keep them pretty natural on the editing side. The further overboard you go, and by or overboard, sometimes I mean just the trendier you try and make them look, the faster those photos are going to be t dated. So I absolutely hate <laughs> the fact that when I started off, I took some really cool photos, but I edited them to the extreme, and so now I can't use them in my portfolio at all. Now I can't talk because I don't know why, but hopefully you get my point. It's frustrating if you have great photos and they're over edited. So in a year from now, you just say, what was I thinking? Okay, this one, I've just gone through. Same difference. We're going to go ahead and adjust that white balance, grab some exposure, take our highlights down a little bit. Now we're looking kind of soft. A lot of that is because there's just not much contrast in the photo and because of this veil. So I'm going to try adding some dehaze like so. Okay, something like this. Now, one thing that I'm starting to realize and continuing to work, realize, whatever, is that at the end of the day, sometimes a photo just does not want to do what you want it to do because it doesn't have those ingredients in it to start with. I'm not going to make chocolate cake if I have no chocolate in my photo, right? So try and learn, okay, this is what is in the photo. I'm not going to be able to change the fact that there's a veil. I'm not going to be able to change the fact that there's a pretty extreme color issue. Everything is super warm. So I'm either going to make it really cold, it's going to feel weird, or I just embrace that warm. Now, of course, if you have a color cast, you want to adjust it. You can go down to the calibration tool and maybe take our reds a little bit this way. Hello. Somewhere like that. And shadows a little bit towards magenta. Greens. Honestly, we might just take some saturation out of those. Now, if you're wondering how this tool works, I have a in-depth video, you guessed it, elsewhere on the channel, so you can check that out. Again, less is more here, so I'm going to dial back what I've already done with the goal of hopefully not going overboard before, after. So I've just gotten rid of a little bit of that kind of orange cast to the photo. Before, after, we're still looking pretty cold. I can mess around with this, but honestly, kind of is what it is a little bit. We can maybe grab our texture brush. It's just ironic because, you know, I've already got this soft veil in front of things. I don't want to push it too far and try and make it into something that's not. Take your own advice, Ryan. Side note, if you have questions, you have opinions, you just want to tell me a funny joke, please leave a note, a note, <laughs> please leave a comment below. It means the world to me. Helps the YouTube overlords just do their thing. Okay, now that, that is one over-edited looking photo. So we're going to dial back on our contrast, maybe brighten things up a little bit. Here's before, here's after. Is it magical? Is it way improved? Probably not, because I still am not super happy with it. That's what happens when you're editing a photo with a color cast, and when you're doing a live tutorial, and you just sort of wind up with that. <laughs> but you can see the difference between this photo, hello, this photo here, schwing, and this photo here, 
is night and day in terms of what you're starting with. This photo kind of has a weird kind of contrast situation going on. The colors of the skin are just really, eh, you know, whereas this photo already looks beautiful and it's completely raw. So if you can get your colors better in camera, you're always going to have a better time, especially if you're just a so-so editor like myself, because I can literally just grab some exposure, grab a little bit of contrast, and that looks amazing. I'd be ready to ready to share that right now. But because this is a tutorial on editing portraits, let's experiment with a few things. Grab our radial filter, take our exposure down and invert it with the apostrophe key. Think you're seeing a pattern by now. I'm gonna make it really big and I always make sure that the feather is all the way up. And sometimes like I'm doing now, I take the effect to the extreme and then I dial it back. So I just can see better where it's affecting and where it's not if the exposure is all the way down versus a little bit. Something like that before, after, just adding a little bit of focus to the center of our image. Could you do that by adding a nice vignette? Well, yes, you could. I just find that you have a little bit more control by doing a radial filter than you do with a vignette. Okay, I'm going to enhance the details here with our add texture brush. Once again, there's the settings if you want them. And if you're using Lightroom Classic and not Lightroom CC, you can actually save your settings down here as a preset. That's another huge tip I have for you. If you're editing portraits all the time or just period, save your brush presets. It's going to save you a lot of time versus starting every time from scratch and being like, okay, so I want to add some texture. So I'm going to do this a little bit, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. And it just takes a long time to create those brushes when you could just save it once. Go down here, save current settings as new preset, put in my brush. And then for the future, you're just going to be able to go down here, grab my brush, and you can start editing right away. So that's my tip for you. Again, comment for me. Do you have any other tips, tricks, things that I'm missing, things you do differently? I'd actually love to hear it, and it really benefits other people as well. So share your thoughts, share your opinion. I certainly don't have all the answers. Just sharing the few I have found on the way. Okay, this one, again, you can see the difference in lighting. So obviously this was indoors. The light is pretty good. It's a little bit flat. I'd say that there's not a lot of background separation, so we're gonna wanna add some of that. And her skin obviously is a little bit on the, it, she wasn't having a good skin day. That's, we'll just leave it at that. This is way over edited, by the way. So we'll just dial that back. That's another tip, I guess. Always come back to the photo like two, three minutes later, and you're always going to see, oh, that went too far, or that could use this, because your eyes get used to it. After you've looked at a certain photo for 20, 30 minutes, and you come back to it after having some dinner or lunch or a snack or a nice smoothie, <laughs> you're going to come back and be like, oh man, that was just ridiculous. Why didn't I see that? Well, it's because you were staring at it so long, it just became normal to you. Your eyes adjusted, and you forgot what a tomato was supposed to look like. Shame on you. Okay, so I'm just adding some contrast. We took our highlights down. And then we're going to zoom in and we're going to fix this skin. How do you do that? Well, I do have a skin fixing brush, skin soften and desat. Now this is a bit of an older brush. I need to update it, but lowering the texture a little bit can be helpful. Lower the contrast a little. And we're just going to brush. Now there are many ways to soften skin. Press O so I can see what I'm doing. You could of course go through with the spot removal tool and the larger blemishes or whatever you wanted to remove, you could do with that. I'm just trying to make it quick here. So here's before, here's after. Now that might be a little bit too far, so we're going to take our clarity back up. Something like that, maybe add some highlights, add some glow. Hello, it's very subtle. There we go, something like that. Before, after. So that's feeling a lot better. But now her whole face looks really bright in comparison to the rest of her body. This is another reason you always want to zoom out. Check out the rest of the photo. Good. So now we've kind of evened out that skin. Brighten things up. Here's before. Here's after. Nice. We can darken things down in the overall exposure now. A little bit. Grab our radial filter. Reset it. I'm just going to add some separation from the background by inverting that with the apostrophe key. Good. Make sure it's kind of centered on her face. Okay. Before, after. Now the background is kind of green. If we wanted, we could adjust that, maybe add some magenta to it. Woo! Like that. Just a little bit. And I'm actually going to 
experiment with taking the contrast down. Here's before, here's after, a little bit of separation. Okay, now let's do a tone curve. If this panel scares the heck out of you or it's just confusing because quite honestly it is confusing, I'm gonna get real. Um, basically we've got our whites, our blacks, our shadows, our midtones, our highlights. So I know, you just have to memorize what those things are. The All the bright parts of the image, this side, all the dark parts, this side. So we can grab these different points and neutral, let's reset all of this. Neutral is right here on the middle. So if we take our black point, which is the farthest left, we can take it all the way above, kind of the neutral black point, and that'll make it white. If we take it all the way back here, what we're doing is we're extending the black point, which is taking the blacks and saying, okay, shadows, you're now black. Midtones, you're now black. Highlights, you're now black. Whites, you're now black. Now once you do that, pretty much everything in the photo is black. So the thing is, you just need to learn that in such a way that it sort of makes some sense to you and then you can kind of adjust and say, okay, I want to make my midtones a little bit brighter and my highlights a little bit darker. And I want to make my blacks a little bit brighter and my shadows a little bit darker. And then you wind up with something beautiful like this that should be hung in a museum, of course. Overall, the thing you're going to want to do and the thing that most tutorials do is they raise the highlights just a little bit. Midtones either sit where they are or get lowered just a little bit and the shadows get dropped just a little bit. And that's called an S-curve because apparently it looks kind of like an S. Now, if this made zero sense and you're just like, what the heck did he just say? Go ahead, check out my tone curve tutorial. It goes into this, it actually explains it in a way that's gonna make sense to you and isn't super complicated. So go ahead, check that out. Otherwise, hopefully that was sort of beneficial. Add an S-curve just as default, that's what almost every tutorial ever is going to do. And you can see we've just added a little bit of contrast, made the image pop a little. Here's before, here's after. So again, we're just making small incremental improvements little by little. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to grab these few larger blemishes, use our spot removal tool. Nothing super complicated about this, but if you've never used this before, you click where you want to remove. It's going to sample a different part of the image and grab it, kind of copy that over onto where the spot is. And depending on whether it's on clone or heal, it's either going to exactly copy that part of the image onto this little spot, or it's going to attempt to intelligently kind of look at it, say, okay, compared to this part of the image and how dark it is over here, what should we adjust? So you can get varying results. If it's not working on clone, try heal. If it's not working on heal, try clone. In general, you're gonna to wanna to stick with heal. And you can take and change the sample point if you want. So sometimes Lightroom will get it wrong. You can see like that and it will actually add some hair onto her forehead where there should be no hair. So you can drag that point somewhere else. Spot removal tool is great. Just be aware that it's going to use a lot of CPU power. So if you're on an older computer like me, you're gonna find that after you do this a few times, Lightroom really starts to get slow. Also the key is if you are editing multiple images, make sure when you copy the settings onto your next photo, Command C or copy, make sure you un check spot removal because there's nothing worse than getting 300 photos into a set and you realize oh no I copied this stupid spot on every single photo didn't notice it and now I have to go back and just fix that just a hot tip for you okay so this one on her lip and eh, we're gonna see if we can get away with just using this so sometimes just finding somewhere else on that same line is the best method so that's okay I mean it's not perfect but I think you see where I'm going with this. Here's before, here's after. We've really cleaned things up. It's not a magical cure-all fix for everything, but spot removal can be quite amazing. I'm gonna add another brush here, just enhance a few details. I'm gonna go down to the hair and lashes brush. This is what I've got, if you want to copy it. And I'm going to just add that onto the hair and lashes. Jeez, <laughs> I'm half asleep. We don't want hair and lashes. We want the iris enhance. That's going to add some saturation. It's going to raise the contrast, just going to make the eyes pop a little. Now, one thing that I am finding overall, don't go too far on this, because if the eyes are just way too bright, they have this super creepy effect. So just a hot tip for you. Okay. So here's before that. Here's after. I'm not sure if I'm loving it. I think we might actually dial back on the contrast. Raise the whites a little bit. And raise the exposure just a bit. And of course, this eye is darker than this one, so I might, maybe, attempt adding another brush on this side. 
just to brighten that dark area of the eye a little. Not too much, because obviously it's in the shadow, but okay. So here's before, here's after. Eyes definitely, when we zoom out, look too bright, and they're just popping too much. So we're going to dial that back. Shoot. Shoot. That's better. Okay, so here's our photo, before, after. I think you're seeing the gist of things. You could keep messing around all day. That's the other thing about portraits. When it comes down to it, you could continue editing the same photo forever. You could spend 10 minutes, 10 seconds, or 10 hours on a photo, and really it's easy to get lost in just making adjustments, and it's like, when do I know when I'm finished? I like to walk away for a second once I've got it, you know, 90% of the way there, come back to that photo and say, oh, does this need anything obvious? Or does it need anything taken away that I've just gone way too far? If it does, fix it. If not, walk away. You're done. It's good. And the better the photo is in camera, the less it's going to need. Like this photo, really great light, really beautiful scene. I love the colors. I could just do that and be happy with it. Just because you have all those tools below you doesn't mean you have to use them, right? Just because you like to sometimes use a radio filter on your photos doesn't mean you have to do it on every single photo. So that's all I'll say about that. I would literally be happy with it just like this. If you wanted, you could maybe enhance these greens because I think they're really cool, just to bring out a little bit more color. And to do that, I just brushed on them really quick. And we're going to add some saturation. Something like that. Something super subtle. Before, after. Not much necessary. I'm happy with it. Okay, this one very hazy. I'm not exactly sure why. And our subject isn't centered in the photo. So if you wanted to, you could crop your photo, press R on your keyboard and move it so that she's centered. I'm going to leave it like this because maybe it'll just bug you that way. Now let's grab our dehaze, adjust that so that things feel a little bit more normal. Somewhere around there probably. Then we're going to take our white balance because things are way too warm. We're going to dial it back probably to around here. And lastly, let's just play around with our tint. I think a little bit more green would actually be better. Before, after. Okay, we're looking more natural. Good. We could add a little bit more contrast or just for practice sake, head to the tone curve. Now you might be saying, okay, Ryan, why would I ever use the tone curve when we're basically just adding contrast? And we could do the same thing by grabbing that good old contrast slider. Well, good sir, madam, the reason is control. So if you're using the tone curve, you have access to a few other things. You can adjust the red channel, green channel, and blue channel individually. So if we want to, we can just add contrast in the blues. And we can add a little bit less contrast in the greens. And again, if this is confusing, I understand. It's confusing to me, and I've been doing this for a long time. But <laughs> you can check out my tone curve tutorial, and I actually do kind of explain how this works a little bit more and why that's helpful. Because sometimes you will want to edit these individually. The other thing is, if you want to, with the tone curve, you can do things like raise the black point and kind of add a filmy vibe to your image. So let's go like that, something like that. Okay, so here's before and here's after. That is not a helpful thing because it's not clearly obvious enough. So we're just going to grab this up. Okay, see how I'm adding a fade to the bottom? That's what you can do. And you can do the same thing with your white. So we can grab, double click on the far outside one. That'll just kind of create this straight line. And we can do one of those, isn't that pretty? This can actually be more helpful than it looks because you can kind of give your photo more of a creamy sort of filmy vibe just by making the highlights, the brightest part of the image, the brightest whites, more of a gray and the darkest part more of a shadow than a pure black. And it'll just give it more of a natural organic feel. So that's something lots of people do. That's another reason you might want to use the tone curve. Okay, that said, I'm just going to add some contrast because I think that looks fine for this photo. Use the tone curve and then he just uses contrast. What a guy. What a guy. He said about himself. Okay. I'm just lowering the contrast on her. Maybe raise the exposure a little bit. Drop the overall exposure exposure of the image by holding shift and pressing the minus key on my keyboard or the plus key. There's another tip for you. Always, always, always learn the keyboard shortcuts. You will not regret it. The main ones I use are honestly the plus and minus keys on my keyboard to adjust the exposure. The period key will alternate what those plus and minus keys adjust, which is pretty awesome. And then, you know, you've got your shortcuts like R for crop. Those are kind of the main ones that I use, honestly. And O is going to show your overlay, apostrophe, inverts your mask. What else? That's about it. I'm kind of rambling. We're going to keep going. Lower the exposure overall, somewhere like that. 
here's before, here's after. Now, it depends what you want to do, of course. If you wanted to, you could go nuts. You could make the background really dark. Hello. Like a so. Invert it with the apostrophe key. If nothing else, you're going to learn some keyboard shortcuts today. And if this video has been helpful, again, like, comment, even subscribe if you're feeling crazy. Good. We've darkened the background. We'll brighten things up, add a little bit more contrast here. Okay, so here's our before. Here's our after. Have I gone too far? Probably, but for the sake of this tutorial, hopefully you get my point. All right, last one. Grab our white balance. Contrast. Honestly, I think that's kind of dope as is. I just used the word dope in 2021. I don't know if I can pull that off. Raise the exposure. Good. Basically, just separating her from the background a little bit. And then maybe do our texture brush here on her fringe, eyebrows, maybe the jewelry. I don't know. That'll make that pop a little bit more. Bam. It's all about that bling. Bam. And her tattoo. Sure. Why not? I don't even remember what this was for. Oh, yeah. Brightening her overall. Okay. Here's before and after. So again, nothing super complicated, nothing super crazy. You can do this, and I would really encourage you to do it. Go to signatureedits.com slash free raw files, or just go to signatureedits.com and hit the button that says free raw files. Where is that? Whoop. Over here. Free raw photos. Ha. And once you do that, you can go ahead, edit these yourself, and do me a favor. Do hashtag signature edits and at signatureedits.co so that I can actually see what kind of edits you're pulling off with these images. I would really appreciate it. Love to get involved and just see your work and share it with the community. So thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, which I really hope it was if you watched this much, otherwise I guess you just fell asleep, do me a favor, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe if you want more tutorials, resources, and content like this. And last of all, if you want some free presets, I will link a, leave a link in the description below. So check that out too. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.